Good afternoon, my name is Jeffrey Benson. I'm the current president of the California Choral Directors Association. And it's my pleasure to introduce our amazing panel for our second webinar series, Online Choir, Adapting Our Choral Curriculum for Virtual Learning. Our panel is Rob Eistad from Cal State Fullerton and our immediate past president of CCDA, Molly Peters from West Ranch High School and Rancho Pico Junior High, Linnell Martin from the Oakland Youth Chorus, Christy Rohayam from East Bakersfield High School, and Peggy Spool from the Vivace Youth Chorus. Our moderator today is Chris Peterson from Cal State Fullerton and also our current president-elect of CCDA. Hi friends, this is Rob Eistad coming to you from my home office on behalf of CCDA and our new web series, our webinar series with CASMEC. It was my pleasure to uh, present some ideas about interacting positively in our new virtual world just last week with a bunch of my colleagues from CCDA. Unfortunately, the recording didn't work for my portion and uh, I've been asked to record uh, what I said over again for you. So here we go. First of all, I hope you're doing well and I hope life is okay during this crazy, difficult time. I found myself at first when this happened, very, very depressed. Um, and then I started to dream about the future and collaborating with my friends and colleagues has given me great hope. I'm gonna to talk to you about two ways that I have found two different aspects of my life. One is higher education, my work at Cal State Fullerton as Director of Choral Studies, and one in a community a nonprofit organization. Currently I'm the Artistic Director of Pacific Chorale, which is a large uh, pro core professional chorus in Orange County. Uh, first, I'd like to tell you that I think that all of us need to begin imagining how to pivot our lives and our organizations during this time. I do not see a resolution in social distancing happening anytime within the next 12 months. And I think it would be really wonderful for us to develop the brains of entrepreneurs, thinking very carefully about how we can reimagine our curriculum, our performing ensembles, and our artistic product for a society that is social distanced and primarily interacting on the web. First, I want to talk to you about higher education. At Cal State Fullerton, um, we really are trying to be kind to our students. We understand that ensembles um, over the web are not the same thing as meeting in person. A virtual choir is really not a choir at all. Therefore, we have, as a faculty, come together to craft guidelines that will not overtax our students and we think will help them in their professional musical goals. First of all, each student uh, music major is only required to uh, complete two projects, regardless of the number of ensembles they perform in. This is particularly important for students in the instrumental area, as many play in a jazz band, a wind ensemble, and sometimes a university orchestra. Each student will prepare, uh, prepare a proposal for uh, their major performing ensemble conductor that will tell them about, first, a musical project that they will engage in that will increase their aptitude, both for hearing and for playing and singing, and second, something that will increase their musicianship and technical skill on their instrument. I provided a wonderful document that is in uh, that is on our website where you can see all of our suggestions for these uh, activities and ways that the students can interact. Um, the second thing that we're doing um, at Cal State Fullerton um, has to do with our conducting classes. I'm teaching most of the conducting classes online. Thank goodness my students have been trained to audiate using tuning forks. So I'm asking them to do a lot of singing and conducting with themselves while they are performing. It's not perfect, but definitely it has not been totally negative. In fact, many of the students have found that because they're conducting in silence using their musical imagination, they're conducting much better than they had ever imagined. As we think about our recital and jury uh, policies, we've given the studio teachers, the knowledgeable studio teachers who are the experts and the person most connected to our students, authority to determine what to do. Juries are canceled as are recitals, but degree progress will not be hindered by what's happened this semester. I've also 
given you our policy sheet for what we're doing with ensemble, or for what we're doing with our recitals and our juries. I hope you'll take a look at that. You know, I had a conversation with my friend Rollo Dilworth on a board meeting uh, with Chorus America, and what he said uh, really uh, touched me deeply. He's the dean at Temple University, and he said they're really existing um, to support the three C's right now as faculty. First is care, second is consistency, and third and last is curriculum. We're trying to do the same. We're caring for our students. We're trying to find regular ways to interact with them that is both supportive and educationally engaging. And uh, we are still trying to uphold their career goals as professional musicians. We can't allow this to stop that. Next, I'd like to talk with you about Pacific Chorale and what we're doing. There are a lot of creative things happening around the country. Um, I've been a part of some listening groups, and so I'm going to give you some ideas about what to do, not just uh, uh, what Pacific Crowd is doing, but what some other people are doing. First of all, if you're not pivoting your organization, you must start now. Um, you need to plan for socially distanced rehearsals and performances possibly featuring fewer performers than normal. We need to anticipate ways to overcome a variety of these hurdles, primarily with regard to our revenue, earned revenue, and contributed revenue. For fundraising, I encourage you to look at the Los Angeles Master Corral. They have right now an online gala, which is quite effective. They're also offering an online auction that features uh, lots of high-end items that wealthy donors might be interested in purchasing during this difficult time. Things like private airfare. Who wants to fly on a commercial airline right now? If you have the funding, wouldn't it be nice to have a private uh, trip somewhere. These, um, these experiences are managed by online companies that of course take a percentage of the revenue earned. I encourage you to look at all the fine print before you do something like that. In addition to applying for your PPP loans, um, I would look for ways to engage your staff paid singers and volunteer singers, creating virtual engagement. Um, oh, uh, virtual engagement. So here are a couple of ideas create digital content in place of a concert. Take the money you had budgeted for one of your season concerts and instead use that to create something very engaging that you could present online, maybe even for a fee or uh, to encourage donations, but also something that could be used as promotional material for years to come. These are investments that you're making in your marketing and in your organization, I think that will continue to pay off. I uh, would consider paying your staff singers to create content, specifically if you've received PPP funding and there are no rehearsals to be made. Many of our staff singers would be very interested in creating engaging, fun, moving performances that you could use to broadcast and continue to promote and keep your ensemble's awareness, not only in your patrons' eyes, but in your donors as well. The other thing is to think about creating a modular season. Pacific Corral has done this. I totally changed my programming for next season to create what my friends are calling the transformer uh, of the Optimus Prime of a performing season. In other words, our performances could be picked up and moved at a moment's notice or postponed. And they are not dependent on being performed in a specific venue. They could be performed in a church, in a concert hall, even an auditorium. It doesn't matter. So uh, I would consider doing something like that. The repertoire is also flexible with regard to the number of performers. So for instance, each concert could be performed with as few as 24 singers or as many as 140 in some cases. I think that's really, really important to pick that flexible repertoire, again, to allow you to create those sort of ideas. We're all worried about not being able to offer our holiday programs, but maybe, you might want to offer a little Christmas in April next year. Who wouldn't want to bring their children to experience the joy of Christmas, even though it's past, technically on the calendar, but wouldn't it be fun to say, well, Santa Claus is going to come just a little bit later this year to bless us all in April. I think that's kind of a fun idea. You could also create weekly live streams. Many of our friends are doing that. In Canada, Eric Light with Corleone has an entire series that he's offering from his living room. He's inviting composers and conductors, choreographers, people that, that are, are interesting, that speak well, and that he knows 
to engage in some interesting conversations. They're getting quite a bit of traffic over this. The other uh, great idea I heard, um, and this is again, not something I came up with. There's an organization on the East Coast that's come up with this idea of a modular, uh, sorry, of a replay ticket. Again, I'll say it's a replay ticket. So we all know that live streaming a concert can be terribly time consuming. The technology is not user friendly. In fact, it's mostly problematic um, and is not reliable at all. Wouldn't it be amazing to record a performance and then offer a replay ticket to your audience? The group that's done this has had great success, not only with engaging people that weren't able to attend their concert from all over the world that would pay a minimal amount of money to watch this replay experience, but also concert goers that really, really loved the concert that want to hear it again. And to me, this was a really brilliant idea. During our conversation that we had last Tuesday, folks asked about how it worked. I can tell you I'm not a tech guru, but I do know you would have to use some web hosting um, capacity to lock it on your website. You could offer a fee for a key. You could get a pass key to get in and observe the material, sort of like on demand, sort of like what Netflix does. Or some people make it free of charge and they encourage folks to donate. Two groups have been doing it. One said they've had actually better luck with the donation request, that people have given more money than the nominal $15 fee to see the replay tickets uh, in, in the other camp. Either way, these creative ideas hopefully might pique your interest and I under out your sense of planning. We all have to plan for what will be an uncertain future. Just like a great quarterback, we have to take the ball and keep moving it down the field toward the opposing end zone, regardless of what comes at us. We have to look for those opportunities where we could gain just a few more yards. The only way to do this is to be flexible, be creative, be positive, and remain in constant communication with the people that support you, your singers, your audience, your donors, your parents, your administration, and your colleagues. I'm here for you. I'm happy to answer any questions. And I'm looking forward to the day when we can all get together again to sing, to share ideas, and maybe a couple of glasses of wine. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure to replay this video for you. Be well. All right, we're going to move on right now. And let's hear from uh, Linnell Martin from the Oakland Youth Chorus. Oh. Hey, everybody. There you go. So I'm um, Oakland Youth Chorus, and we have different facets of our chorus, as most of organizations that are like that. We have our, our uh, elementary schools, as well as our middle school and high school. So I'm just going to tell you a few things that we've been doing to kind of keep moving forward and just try to be resilient through this time. We have 125 hours of teaching time, and in that 125 hours, we've done pretty much everything with Zoom. So we've served 114 hours with this just Zoom. So we've been doing a lot of Zooming around with all of our rehearsals, as most of, most of you have, have been doing as well. Um, and we're finding that it's working for the kids that are accessible, that have accessibility for that. Um, for our K through fifth grader teachers, um, not only are they doing the Zoom record, re, um, rehearsals, they're also continuing to do pushing, pushing the content out with just creating links. So they're creating their, their different little rehearsals and things like that with game, games and songs, and they're pushing that content out um, with links for their singers so that they can keep that music going and keep that con contact with each singer. Um, and also they've been doing uh, by week so they have a different theme each week so that the kids can come back and also be able to um, reflect on the things that they've had that, that they've learned as well as being able to just coming together and talking about what's going on and how they made it through this whole little situation. Um, I'm over the middle school part portion, the middle school and the high schoolers. And again, we're doing Zoom rehearsals, but I've also found that since our singers our schools that we're mandated, when we don't have the five day a week now, we have to now water it down to two days a week, which makes it much more difficult to get information out. Um, and then our time, it's not no, no longer 45 minutes or a 52 minute class. We have to do a 30, 25, 30 minute class. What do we do? 
So I've been using a lot of the sight reading factory as, a, as my go-to to make sure that I have something to grade because now our district is gonna go to grade um, credit, no credit for our singers or for our, sing uh, for our musicians. And so I need to have something to be able to grade them with. So I've been using sight reading factory a lot to make those things happen. Um, as much of you guys have probably already done sight reading factory as well. And then Molly's gonna talk about this, um, but I just started doing Flipgrid, which is something that the kids really enjoy. Um, it's hard for me because I'm just trying to figure it out, but it's like Facebook for them and they're like, okay, this is old or whatever. But it's really great um, because I can create content. I can also have them watch TED Talks and be able to review and we can talk as a group. When we do have our Zoom meetings, they, we can talk. They can also make their own videos, um, just expressing just different things um, for them. So we have gone to uh, Flipgrid and we have also gone to uh, Sight Reading Factory more so than anything for those singers. For our concert chorus and our chamber singers, which though th that time we have more time with them. I do have a 45 minute rehearsal, but I have ran into now doing um, sectionals with them. So it's not a full, all, everyone, all 35 or whatever group, however many there are, we're going to sectionals. I do continue to do music with them. And when I do the music, um, a lot of the times, I don't do a lot of copywriting or whatever, um, but we do have the music that we are using, which luckily some of them went home with their music, which was great. But we do use Choir Genius where we upload a lot of our things and most of our music that we are, are using for them to copy are things that are commissioned. So if our, most of our commission pieces, we're using those pieces um, to do anything that we may want to put out onto the, on our social media or what have you. So we're doing using our choir genius as our mainstay to get, um, get music in their hands. And we're also um, just moving forward with Sight, Sight Reading Factory as well. Um, just because a lot of the times we're having, even though we're in this time and we have a short length of time, we want to be able to push forward because some of our gigs that we're going to come back because we know that this is just a temporary, we keep saying the new normal, but it's, it's really temporary and just going to be a new normal kind of way that we're going to move through this temporary situation. Um, but we need to be able to um, continue on with our music making and continue on knowing that we have other organizations that we need to fulfill contracts and, and other music making opportunities with them. Um, we had a, a recital that was supposed to happen on Friday, and since we're not doing that recital in that in our normal way, we're going to use Crowdcast um, to make our recital happen. Um, we're at the beginning stages of that, and we have a meeting tomorrow, so I can't really fill you in on Crowdcast if you don't know about Crowdcast, but we're going to move on with Crowdcast for um, our recitals and any other, some other things that we have down the pike um, for that, as well as using acapella. Um, the acapella app for just trying to push out more content and more available uh, visibility for us to be seen um, but looking ahead to navigate throughout after this pandemic on the other side of the pandemic we're starting to have our conversations just like robert said we're starting to have our conversations about what is it going to look like how do i um, start my rehearsals how do i um, prepare for rehearsal when we don't know if it's still going to be virtual or are we going to have social dis distancing rehearsals or what have you. How are our concerts going to look? So we're beginning to have those beginning conversations um, and really try to be very cognizant of keeping our, our um, audience safe, but also keeping them engaged, which is the most difficult part is just to keep them engaged. Um, and just to know that we are, we are doing this together. I know a lot of people saying we're staying in together. We're doing this together so that we can always continue to show that there's love. And it's just such a great, I know this is a downer that we're in this pandemic, but it's such a great opportunity for our, um, for our discipline. I've had seen so many commercials and news breaks with choirs singing on TV. It's just wonderful to see this music and to see that we're still moving forward. Um, so I hope that something I said, some app or something um, that I said can help in some kind of way. And we're going to make it through this whole little situation. Well, not little, it's big, big situation. We're going to make it through this um, singing, fighting with our singing voices to come through. So thank you. Thank you, Linnell, so much. Uh, there was a question that came through immediately, uh, and that is, how does a Zoom rehearsal work? And then we've seen a few other people chime in that it doesn't really work very well. But did you find success at all with Zoom in a rehearsal setting? For me, um, 
I've only really used it as sectionals because I can't like, you can't like have the whole group because of the delay. Um, mm -hmm. And I, we did learn that if you put your headphones, that kind of help, but it doesn't, no, it's not an actual factual like, hey, this is how we're going to do our rehearsals for the rest of the time because I have a great sound. No, no, it's not. It's not the typical what you want to have for a rehearsal. No, 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 no. Just for, for me. I for think that answers, our, the, that answers our question very, very well. I know you had mentioned Sight Reading Factory, Flipgrid, Choir Genius, Crowdcast, the Acapella app, uh, and so many things. I'm wondering if, if you have a chance to put any links in the description or in the chat. People might be able to get some of those. That'll be great. Anything you have. Um, and I love, I love your uh, safe and engaged is a great thing to say. It's, it's only temporary. Let's keep them safe and engaged. All right, let's hear from Molly Peters now. Hi, that's me. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Molly. Um, I teach at uh, Junior High and High School Public School in Southern California. Um, I am this. We, we are actually this is our fourth week of distance learning. Our district jumped on it. I think before maybe some of yours. I mean, we were out of school. The last day was Friday, March 13th, and we were setting up our classrooms on the Monday and Tuesday, 16, 17. Our first day of classes with our kids was March 18th. Um, I'll just tell you a couple of things that I think, um, you know, where again, it's all sort of like making, you know, like, I don't know, building the bridges, you're going across it. But um, we have like set times for the district, but I do not meet with my kids. My block is Monday and Wednesday from one to two thirty. I post an assignment on my Google Classroom and then I give them the week or, you know, maybe through the weekend, um, ideally to get that work done. Um, some of the things that I think uh, my my biggest sort of shift as all this was, you know, being thrown at us was just to say, I'm not here. Um, I, I don't see the point in trying to hold a rehearsal. So I'm just trying to come up with ways to keep the kids engaged and keep music in their life. Um, one of the, my favorite activities was something that was created by Susie Marton. She teaches in Palo Alto. Um, it was a game she made called Singo. And so the idea is, you know, you, you have these squares and um, the kids do these tasks and then they um, I got so many great videos, everything from like send me a choir meme to um, interview a family member who or, you know, a relative who, who sang in choir um, or write me a paragraph. Tell me what you like about choir. I have my kids do program notes. So that was an option. Um, so, you know, that was really great because they had to do specific things. And some of the notes I got from kids and the interviews they recorded or they, you know, paraphrased um, were really, really touching. So that was really special. Um, so I try, I'm not so much focused on like, I have to meet with my kids from, from 1 to 2.30 every Monday and Wednesday. Um, something really cool that uh, in our district, because we have a pretty large district, so the choir directors are still doing Zoom meetings. Um, and one of the directors is like, hey, you know, I have a lot of professional singers and engineers who are, they don't have anything to do right now. So every two to three weeks, I'm doing a chat with somebody so that's a big zoom meeting um it's it that's the only time that's sort of like mandatory if the kids don't come they have to submit questions to me that they would ask so that's a great resource to use all of your out of you know your your professional colleagues and friends who are also sitting at home right now and they're more than happy i'm sure to do a zoom with your students so please take advantage of those resources um I did want to share just a couple of things that uh, I'm in the process of doing on Flipgrid. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, and I know I'm sure, raise your hand if you already use Flipgrid. It's, it's, if you don't, it's really easy to use because I am not super tech savvy and I was able to set this up very easily. Um, and there, are, you can go in and there's parameters, but you create your grid. So these are my five classes, my two junior high choirs, my high school choirs, and my guitar class. And then you just post specific um, assignments and you can, like in Google Classroom, you can copy if you want the kids to have the same assignment or you can you know create different ones so like for my guitar class they're they're turning in a video test of themselves playing um but tying in with flipgrid um this was something also our what a, a teacher in the district came up with and you know i we're the great thing about being in a community like this is that everybody shares so one of my biggest concerns christy and i were talking earlier about this and i'm sure you guys too 
how do we recruit? <laughs> um, how do we set up classes for the fall? I mean, you know, if we are going to be back in school, are we able to have large class, you know, all of that stuff. So I thought I'd sort of combine an assignment and then turn it into a tool. So a promo video so the kids will uh, upload and you can set parameters. So for this particular thing, it's a two minute video where they answer all these questions. Why do you love being in choir? How is it you know, impacted your life in a positive way. Uh, oh, sorry, in a one minute, not two minute video. Please say your first name only, your grade, which choir you were in and why you love being part of choir at West Ranch and how it has had a positive impact on your life. So then I'm gonna take those and maybe make a two minute promo. We have a news, um, you know, both at the junior high and the high school, they do the student news. So get them to play that, get it to the counseling department, see if they'll post it on their webpage. Um, Cause you can, once you're in Flipgrid, you can um, download. So it's, it's nice, it sorts all the kids, you know, and it, it has their, their name and then under each action you could download. So I'm, I'm fortunate my husband is um, an editor, so he's gonna help me edit <laughs> um, that video. But um, so that's something that's sort of, I think kind of two birds with one stone, give them an assignment, remind them why they're in choir, keep them connected to the community, and then I'll have a nice, thing, you know, a nice product that I can use for the future. So I'm excited about that. That one I assigned on Monday, their videos are due Friday, and I'll probably have the thing finished by the end of next week. Um, and the other thing I haven't started with the kids, and this kind of came out of actually a conversation with Jeffrey um, a while ago, uh, I'm also going to have the kids do a, a Flipgrid talent show. So we're using that same platform, but they're gonna submit, this is the one that they're gonna to submit to a two minute video of them. You know, they can sing, of course, they can play an instrument, but if, they're, if they wanna do something else, they can do that too. So, and then the, um, you know, this is sort of my, what, my document I'm working on. So I'm not gonna assign this for a couple more weeks. I'll give them two weeks. And then they'll have, after that, I have a, a rubric, whoops. Here's my rubric. So then somehow, you know, the students will get this rubric in Google Classroom and then I'll have specific instructions on how I want them to watch the videos and score them and then we'll sort of have a talent show winner. Um, so those are two ways that I, I want to use Flipgrid. Um, and it's fun because, you know, again, keeping the kids talking about themselves and remembering why they're part of of ensembles, I think is so vital for the future whenever we are allowed to go back. I think that's I think that's all I had. Thank you, Molly. That's really wonderful. Um, one of the things that I really took from that is the talent show. Um, it's one thing to have a talent show, but in this case, kids actually watch and then they um, and they're evaluating and they're using the rubric. And that's something we might not do if we just had a talent show in the in the cafeteria. Um, so in a way, our national standards and so forth are actually being addressed in a way they wouldn't have been otherwise. So very very cool. Uh, let's go to Christy now, Rohan. Let's hear a little bit from you, Christy. There you go. Hi, everybody. I'm Christy Rohan. I teach at East Bakersfield High School in Bakersfield, California. Um, I'm at a site where a lot of the students do not have access to computers and technology. So right before our school went on break, our administration encouraged us to create a handout that we could give to the students before they left. And they also encouraged us to give out supplemental materials and to not um, introduce new curriculum. So based on what they were saying, which I wholeheartedly agree with, I created a packet that probably 50% of the students took along with the journal. Um, and I also sent out on Remind so they have their choice of how they wanna do it. Um, but a lot of the students took the packet and so I just wanna share that with you. Can you see? Good. Okay. Um, so, and some of these assignments are not necessarily music related um, and don't require technology. And I think both of those things are okay at this time. Um, so, the first one is a daily journal entry, um, which they could talk about music or they could just talk about how their home life is going and, you know, what they're seeing on the news. Um, I have one right here that a student shared with me. And 
I like this because if they do it online and they share it, you can like have little dialogue with them, which, you know, keeps you in communication, which to me, the main purpose of me assigning work is just so that I can hear from them and make sure they're okay. Um, like Rob was saying as well, I think they're, they're um, caring about them and their mental health is more important than these assignments at this time. Um, so that's cool. And if they have not written it online, if they just did it in their journal, they can send me um, a picture of it, which makes it, you know, a little more difficult to respond to, but not impossible at all. Another one is that they can build their own concert. So they pick the theme and based on the choirs that we have at our school, um, they create a rep list. Um, and I have one of those. Which again, this is super simple, but it's something I think really fun to do. Also, it's kind of been helpful for me to see the ideas that the students have, because they have so many opinions. You know, you try to pick rep and they're like, why are we doing this? Well, now's your chance to pick the music that you want. And it gives me ideas of stuff that we can do in the future as well. So this student did an oldies but goodies playlist. Super fun. Um, and then the next assignment that I put was a handmade flyer. So using the, the concert that they developed, they could create a flyer. So this is one as well. Um, and it's also nice to just get away from a screen because I think we're being bombarded by, you know, more virtual intimacy than ever before. So it gets overwhelming. So it's, I think it's nice to just sit down with a crayon or color pencil and just have some fun. Um, revisiting music they've already performed. So anything that we've done this year or even previous years, um, they can take out and rework. They can um, video themselves or record themselves and send it, or they can just tell me about it. Any of these assignments they can record or they can just describe to me. Because to be honest, if, if they lied about practicing something, they're writing about it, they probably ended up practicing it in some way. So that's fine by me. Um, they can write a song. Uh, using instruments, anything that they have uh, at home, a bucket, one spoon, um, or even take a song that they really love and just change the lyrics to it. Um, website or concert review. So below, let me scroll down. I made a list of websites that are easy to use and free. So like sight reading, these have little articles, music theory, music composition fun stuff for them to watch. Um, any of these they can play around with and write a review about it, say what they liked or if it was user friendly or not. Um, I'm just gonna scroll through. Uh, one of the teachers in my department, Sarah Downey, she created this mindfulness remind and anybody from the school was able to join it. This one is really, really important to me because um, these times are can be kind of scary and overwhelming, especially for students. So she sends out links to videos or little tips or quotes. Um, so that's been really helpful. I'll let you kind of read through the next few. They can dance to any song that we've um, that we have performed this year. They can give voice lessons to somebody in their household. This is really good for students who are super interested in music and possibly are thinking of doing music education. This is a good way to kind of get them going and seeing if this is really something that they could see themselves doing in the long term. Um, writing a letter of gratitude, especially right now, the, um, counting our blessings and things that we're thankful for, I think is really important for our um, mental health. So that's something that they can just send online as well. Um, I like this shuffle one, put your music on shuffle and try to guess the time signature of the song or the key signature, because um, they can utilize any genre of music that they want, um, which can be really fun. Alongside going for a walk and then um, trying to walk to the beat, you know, using kinesthetics for the music that they're listening to. Um, and then honestly, I just put in my packet all of the schools in our district that are providing meals and all of the extra resources outside of the school district that are providing meals as well. 
Um, so when we had first, you know, gone on break, I thought this was just going to be for a few weeks, as I think a lot of us did, and it's turned out to be longer than we thought. Um, and so I saw, you know, teachers, you guys are amazing going above and beyond doing virtual choirs and learning, you know, new platforms. And I thought for a while, like, this is, you know, I'm not doing enough. This is, you're being a bad teacher, like, <laughs> figure something else out. And the more I'm talking to everybody, the more I'm seeing that for this time period and for what's going on right now, these, you know, simple little games or assignments that they can do is probably more beneficial than trying to cram um, new material down their throats for them and for us as well. Um, and to just stay in contact with them, we've done um, Zoom calls, but our district has now like banned Zoom because of all the, you know, security issues they were facing. Um, but I've been thinking about this a lot this week. And so before I, um, before I move on, I just want to say this is going to sound a bit depressing, but I don't think that it is. I actually think it's, it's a bit positive. Um, I think, well, I know that our, we provide a great service to our students, but I also know that they provided a great service for us as well. And I think in this time where we're feeling the, the sadness of them not being there, not seeing them every day. We've tried to compensate by doing these, you know, incredible things where we were reaching out to them constantly or, you know, doing these huge assignments to kind of fill, you know, that sadness that we're feeling because they're not there. But when you're feeling that, I encourage you to not compensate with assignments because, you know, this is a really stressful time. I know we've been stressed and we're adults and their students and some of them are out there working or you know they're taking care of their younger younger siblings and um, if you are feeling that need to reach out to them i just encourage you to do it in a way that's just to communicate with them so if you want to have a zoom call or a google hangout do that to just check in with them um, and it's okay right now to do the bare minimum in a loving and productive way so that's um, that's just what I wanted to say. And thank you so much for all you do for our students. Thank you, Christy, so very much. Um, so many things that you were saying, I know uh, a lot of people were really into. Uh, a lot of people in the chat were asking that you, would you please post that document with all those wonderful resources? Of course. Um, it, yeah, maybe, maybe a link to it in there. Um, I love um, just making sure that they're okay. And I'm sure your students love you just because of the way you can connect even to us virtually right here. Um, and, um, I like this idea too that that you're helping them do stuff that doesn't necessarily require a computer like you said take out and and take out some crayons and some pencils just really really cool thing and amazing links so thanks thank you of course um let's hear from peggy spool from the vivace youth course in san jose peggy you're here hi everybody i'm right up here hey <laughs> i think i'm up here <laughs> Um, so I, I, I'm the director for Vivace Youth Chorus. We're a community chorus, which means we're not grading our singers or giving out assignments. Um, but I think our role right now is to provide sustenance and support for the singers. I mean, I think what Christy said really resonates for me. Um, I am continuing to hold rehearsals uh, by sections. So I'm meeting the sopranos, altos, so forth. But I'm asking the kids um, what they would like to focus on. Um, and, you know, surprisingly, sometimes it's been that they just want to sing through their music. They feel good um, just reviewing the things we've been working on. It introduces a degree of normalcy, I guess, for some kids. Um, I have one class that are real little theory nerds, and they want to do theory. <laughs> so that's what we've been doing. I'm kind of letting them take the lead. Um, things that have worked well on Zoom, um, one has been solfege and rhythm dictation, and I have one class that just loves to do that. They would do it all day. Um, so that's what I'm doing with them. Um, sometimes we're just talking. Um, sometimes we've been listening to music together and talking about it. Um, and I'm keeping my sessions to half an hour because that seems to be kind of the, the magic hour. I mean, after that, people's eyes start to glaze over and they disappear out of screen and that kind of thing. Um, my colleague, Abby Mabesa, has set up a, a listening party for a cappella music for our teens, and that's been a real hit. It's been really nice to just sit together and listen to the music. Um, we're also putting together just a social Zoom session for our teens because, of course, they love their break during choir. 
Um, and so it's just giving them a chance to sit and chat with each other. Um, the younger choirs are a little harder to deal with. Um, I teach six and seven year olds too, and movement is such an important part of music for them. So I'm doing music with movement that they're doing in their houses too, and that's really been fun. Um, we've even managed to pull off a couple of games um, one day everybody brought a teddy bear and they sang and pointed to each other's teddy bears. I mean, it sounds silly, but they had a blast. And, you know, that's what we're really doing. We're keeping the music alive and, and keeping them singing at home. Um, so we've done a lot of things like that. We've also chain sung our songs, which means one person takes the first line, the next person takes the next line, and we go through the whole group. Um, so just some things that we don't usually do in choir. Um, we're working on a quarantine cafe, haha, <laughs> get that, um, for our teen singers. Um, it's going to be a, a sort of live recital, basically, where they can come and do a song or play something or recite a poem or whatever they want to do, just to keep us connected and sharing things with each other. Um, and we're going to do one for the larger choir, too, that'll allow everybody from the six-year-olds up to, to be part of that. Um, I wrote down some things I thought would be good resources if you work with children's choirs. Um, the Children's Choir Conductor Forum, Robin Lana is the moderator, and she's been doing ongoing sessions um, with different focuses. Uh, there are two tomorrow, um, one dealing with financial challenges and one dealing with connecting with singers online. And on Thursday, there's one about the virtual audition process. So if that's a help for you, definitely check that out. Um, if you work with younger singers, there's something called the singing space, where uh, basically music teachers are sharing music. They're singing songs um, uh, for kids, and it's just a wonderful resource. Um, and if you're trying to do things online with younger kids, that, that has been a huge help to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm basically just trying to connect with my kids. I'm taking their lead, given that we're an after-school activity. We want to keep music in their lives, so we're sending out listening um, possibilities every week, the Metropolitan Opera Free Link, all that kind of stuff, um, the TED Talks and things, just things to enrich their lives at home um, and to keep in touch with them. All right. That's all it. right, Peggy. Well, that, that was a lot in such a short amount of time. I love the idea of the listening party and keeping things down to 30 minutes. Uh, does make a lot of sense. We've kind of, I think we've all sort of seen that when we've been trying to get on there. The Quarantine Cafe is something that I hope everybody will steal. That seems like a great idea. And I think an immediate question that I have is you mentioned um, the Children's Choir Conductors Forum and the virtual um, audition process and singing space. Where can we go to find those? Well, those are both groups on Facebook. If you, if you type in Children's Choir Conductor Forum, you can, you can be an, an automatic invite for that. Singing Space, I think, is an invited group, too. But if you just submit your name, they will admit you. It's called the Singing That's Space. That second group. That's, that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. I love um, keeping them connected is such an important thing. And I love, too, uh, the phrase you said, just keeping the music alive, just making sure that music is in their life. It's a, a really big thing. Well, we have probably about 15 minutes where we can take some questions. And probably the best way to do it would be to either type it in the chat or to raise your hand. Um, if you click on participants, you'll see a little, a little button uh, that says raise hand. Uh, that might be a good way to do it, um, except I don't know if we can get through them all. So uh, if you have a question right now, go ahead and type it into the chat. Um, and I know that we had one right up here. Um, we can have any of our panelists come in uh, and, and talk about this. Um, let's see here real quick. I know, uh, I know a lot of people are just asking how we are going to share all this material. Maybe Dr. Benson can, can assure everybody about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you all so much, panelists. You're amazing. Um, we are updating the CCDA website um, where you all possibly got the link to get into the Zoom meeting each week. We're, our goal is by the end of the week, by Friday, to have th this video online. So if next week you can't join us at three, but you would really want to watch the video, um, Tony, our webmaster, is putting that up by the end of the week. Um, and we'll also, Trish and I will coordinate how we're going to get the chat up there as well, because I know there are a lot of resources there, but all of this will be available to you. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so we have a question now. This is from uh, Jeff Ladone. It says, are college directors willing to Zoom bomb a high school class to talk about continuing choral music and how fun it is and that kind of thing? 
Uh, Dr. I said, are you willing to Zoom bomb a high school class? Big thumbs up, Dr. Benson. I would say uh, in this age of, of being uh, virtually anywhere in the world at the same time, definitely reach out if you, if you want um, resources from anyone, uh, whether they're a college person or not, uh, you, can get, you can get so much uh, experience uh, right into your room. So I, I bet most people would be more than willing to. Uh, this one says, can you remind everyone when you're going to decide if echo is going to happen? Uh, that might be another Dr. Benson question. Yes, we are um, closely monitoring the situation. We would all that your your board and your your executive board of CCDA and the president's council are really sort of watching the situation closely. We would love to be able to still have echo at the end of July. For those of you, um, I know there's some folks visiting from out of state on our Zoom call. Echo is our summer CCDA conference um, out near Yosemite. And um, we have until 90 days out to make the final decision. So that puts us at around the 24th of April. So um, the executive board and the president's council and I will be reviewing everything and making a decision by the 24th of April. And we'll let you know that week as soon as we have more information. We're crossing our fingers that we could still do something. Excellent. And Dr. Peterson, um, just a holdover from last week, um, Julie Dana, um, which we would need to find her photo in the screen. So Julie, if you can do the little hand raising flag thing through persistence. Um, Julie had a couple of good ideas that were pertinent to Tesla's talk last week and this week. So if we have a moment to have her speak, that'd be great. Oh, hi, here I am. Uh, this, I, um, my husband actually gets the credit for this, but my kids are working in groups in our class and um, they have all been given a topic for a concert for, in, in the groups are six or seven max. And they're putting together a 15 minute YouTube concert in each class, they're small groups, and we're gonna have a movie watch party at the for the end of the semester and so they're all going to present and they have to do an acknowledgement page so everybody tells what they're doing they're going to do like some program notes and they have to use choral music um, videos from youtube or wherever they find them that are not current pieces we're working on or have worked on so they have to go out and find repertoire and they i've given them some of the you know the professional choir sites in our in our canvas page but they are so excited about this and they're sharing videos with one another and they're going well how can we make this work into whatever you know like one of the topics is freedom you know and and we've been it's it's really all three of my choirs are doing it and they're all super excited and we're going to have a popcorn night and they're doing it by playlist on youtube i guess they can do i don't even know how to do that but that's they came up with that that idea so they're going to put their concert together and present it to one another at the end of the semester and we're going to have a movie night watching these concerts that are no longer than 15 minutes so maybe three songs or four songs total and it These has great ideas there, thank it was you for fun. sharing these julie yeah absolutely uh, as i watch the chat go by uh, people are asking questions and uh the 152 people on this webinar are answering the questions which probably is a great way to get them answered uh, but we do have a hand up uh, Dan, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, would you have a question for us, Dan? Oh uh, yeah, I, I started using smart music with the students, and uh, the literature there is very limited. So um, I'm not sure how else I can use. There was only one song that my students already knew that I figured they can work on, um, but I thought I'd use it maybe since uh, J. W. Pepper is offering literature that you purchased. Um, I thought I'd use it to maybe learn a song that we didn't quite actually get to learn. I had them put it away a few weeks ago before the, the quarantine, and uh, I thought maybe we can use smart music to learn a song, but I'm not sure how that's going to work. So I'm wondering if anyone else is using it and in what way you're using it. Anyone from our panel want to jump in on that? We're not seeing anyone here. Raise your hand if you're in the room and, you, and you're using smart music and have an answer to that. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I was just I'm gonna say, I, all I'm gonna say is I agree. I did the stupid thing of like, oh, I'm gonna use this thing I've never used before and I find it clunky and not very user friendly. And I agree that the advanced choir site reading passages are like very, very simple. So that was my experience as well, so. 
Got it. Thank you, Molly. Uh, Christopher Borges has a question or uh, something to add about smart music. Uh, oops, am I in now? You are. Okay. Um, our school purchased smart music um, a while back. Actually, the band had been using it a lot. And uh, I'm with Molly. It's the digital version, the online version is really clunky. They have a lot of things to work out. I'm actually just, I've actually just started using it just so that they're doing, that you can use vocalises. So Building Beautiful Voices is on there. And I just sign, assign them a vocalise to do each day. And you know, the nice thing about smart music is you can see that they practiced it and you can actually get an idea of their accuracy on the practice. So I wouldn't use it for a lot of things, but it certainly as like a, a regular way to keep them singing with, with feedback. That's what I've been using it for. That's fabulous. All right. Um, right now, I'm not seeing any questions that haven't been answered by someone. Oh, actually, Hugh uh, McDevitt has his hand up. Hugh, what would you like to say? Um, so I direct a, a non-auditioned uh, women's chorus, community women's chorus in Palo Alto. Um, in terms of Zoom bombing, I have had real great luck for the next, we've been, ha we've been holding kind of virtual rehearsals just to do a little singing on mute. But for the next three rehearsals, I've invited composers of the rep that we have been singing to Zoom in with us. And so far I'm three for three. Uh, these are composers I've already had interactions with for program notes and stuff, but they've been delighted. So for the next three Mondays, um, I've got a local composer in, in the Bay Area, one from Southern California and one international that are going to come in and talk to us about their compositions and, and kind of their composing life. Excellent. Those are, that's really, really wonderful. All right. Um, I want to ask a question actually uh, to, the, to the panel here. Have you thought about the logistics of getting music back and uniforms back and all that kind of thing? I know we can kind of wait until the day that the kids are coming back, but that's something that's been uh, bubbling up as a question from people. Not really, huh, Molly? <laughs> no. I mean, I was just gonna say, I, we are, our district and especially my um, administration, they are very, they're just being very strict I know that our department chair, the band teacher brought that up, how are we gonna get instruments? And um, I haven't heard anything about it, but uh, I, I know we'll have to maintain social distance. Julie did. Julie had her students return stuff. And so, I mean, I'm sure it'll be a hot mess. Can't wait. <laughs> I know that at Cal State Fullerton, we're talking about the you know graduating seniors, maybe mailing things back and doing that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, we can't hold any grades or anything. You know, we just have to trust them, which we would want to do anyway. Um, yeah, but that can be a logistical nightmare, I'm quite sure. Um, and that's what uh, Jennifer here says. What about seniors that we won't see again? How? Are, how <laughs> whoops, it just went away there. But uh, how are we making them feel recognized after four years? Yeah. Um, how do we how do we try to console those seniors that got their senior year kind of taken away from them? I could tell them, Chris, if we're yep. I just wanted to say that Chris and I are both, we work at Cal State Fullerton, and we're actually going to be hosting a virtual award ceremony, like our big awards convocation. And I'm working with the director of the school of music to get a very famous musician that would be inspiring, that would give an inspiring speech, so that that way the kids would be excited about tuning in. You know, imagine if you could get somebody really great to, to do that, and they probably would. And then we can recognize them and give out awards and, and, and recognize the graduating seniors. So you might think about doing that via Zoom. That's a great, that's a great answer. Uh, here's another question that, that was kind of bubbling up uh, along the way. Um, and that has to do with um, what do you do with kids, especially if you're in a credit, no credit environment now, who are simply not engaging? Do you have any ideas for that? I mean, what do we do? Yeah. Um... Yep, we hear you, Kristen. Okay, um, so our district or our, my school has not given us instruction as far as grading. Um, and if they don't, I'm not going to fail a kid. Like if a, if a student had an A before we left, they're keeping the A. If they had an F and they turn in work, they, I'm giving them the opportunity to, you know, raise their grade. But now is not the time, I think, to, you know, be tough and harsh. I think now's the time to give them grace. So um, as much as you can do that, if, if your admin is not, you know, really getting on you in terms of grading, I say um, give them as much grace as you, as you can. Yeah, you know, Christy, that makes a lot of sense because um, this kind of all 
came at the same time and no one obviously asked for it. Um, but this idea of, of giving them a little bit of slack is not a bad idea right now. You know, they, especially with the, um, the mental anguish that a lot of kids are going through too. Um, I know some of them are finding it hard to engage. So that's very good advice. Uh, Tina Peterson has her hand up. Do you have a question, Tina? Um, just talking about the, um, the accountability of students not checking in. And I, we just had a, um, a staff meeting at Irvine High School where I teach. And um, they've asked us to reach out and, and email parents and call home. Um, and mostly out of concern of are the students being overwhelmed with having to take care of younger siblings or are they infected with the virus or are mom and dad essential workers and they're out of the home. And, and um, they've got a protocol set up which I really appreciated the leadership of our administration to a point where if we don't hear from them and the administration is uh, also reached out so multiple times and there's no response, they're actually uh, partnering with our uh, local uh, police department to actually institute wellness checks. I'm gonna ask the local um, Irvine PD to go and just make sure that there isn't something catastrophic happening. Um, we can't always assume the kids aren't engaging because they don't want to. Sometimes there could be lots of other things that we normally support them uh, in their social emotional needs at school, not just meals like Christy talked about, but other things as well. So um, I just appreciated our administration sharing that that was something that they are working to establish because we all have a number of students that home is not a safe place. Uh, school is their safe place. And so I was, um, it made me, um, I had some relief for this couple students that I have some concerns about. So. I just wanted to share that and I was very proud of our uh, district uh, of wanting to reach out and care for those kids. I think one of the cool things about being a choir director is a lot of kids um, do connect with us year after year and we do become the safe haven for them. Uh, I've heard a couple choir directors say that uh, kids are skipping out of their math virtual math classes but they're showing up for their virtual choir classes which I think is kind of yeah, not, not unusual <laughs> right. Bruce Loniger has a question. I'm going to unmute you, Bruce. What do you have hey. to say? Hi, everyone. Um, like Tina's admin, our admin has a system set up where we email the kid and the parents through School Loop and CC the counselor and the administrator. And then if we don't hear back from them again, we let them know. And then they're doing the same thing with our, our police department with wellness checks. And so far, it's been not a lot. Um, in, my, in my younger classes, the, the amount of engagement is a little bit higher than in my advanced classes, which I find interesting. I think the seniors are just, their whole semester got ruined, so they're kind of peace out. Um, but I just wanted to share that, so it's very similar. Yeah, that's, that's excellent, Bruce. Thank you so much for that. Um, we just have a couple more minutes left, so if you wanna raise your hand or share something. Uh, watching this chat go by, I'm just amazed by the genius that we have on this, in this virtual call. Uh, things are, there's just great stuff. We're gonna make sure that the, um, that the transcript of everything and, and the recording of this whole session are available for everybody. So don't worry about that. Um, I would say, I wanna ask the panel, if you feel that there's anything that you wish had been asked that has not been asked at this point, is there anything that you would like to add in the last few minutes? And let me remind you before anyone speaks, our panel was Rob Eisad from Cal State Fullerton, Lonell Martin from the Oakland Youth Chorus, Molly Peters from Santa Clarita, uh, Christy Royham from East Bakersfield High School and Peggy School from the Vivace Youth Chorus. You guys have anything to add? We're not seeing anything any right away. Rob. Rob, 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 we'll go Rob and then we'll go Molly. I'm gonna say Molly first because she's ladies first, always. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, one of the things that I think has been really great about this is how positive everybody is. And um, I, I just think we have to, yes, keep the connections and stay positive and come up with creative ways to engage our students online, but more importantly, probably offline. Um, so I just think it's such a great community and that everybody's like, can you share that? Yes, I can. And I just, it's, it makes, it gives me the warm fuzzies. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm very grateful too. Rob, I said. I was just gonna say how inspired I am seeing all of you, hearing from all of you, looking at your faces. I miss you all terribly. And um, I think that we all have to remember, yes, we're the cheerleaders, right? We're the ones getting together with the kids. We're the ones trying to keep everybody together. But I think also I remind you to take care of yourself, to find time to exercise and to walk and to call your mom and call your best friend and take time away. I discovered that my partner and I live in the same house and I was working all the time. And so 
Now I've decided to treat my back office sort of like school. That's what, when I'm in there, I'm in school. Otherwise, when I'm out of that office, then I'm, I'm participating in the relationship, right? And so I think setting those boundaries and, and engaging in some beautiful self-care uh, is a good thing to do. And I'm still getting better at it. But I love all of you. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Rob, so much. Uh, I'm always amazed uh, when I think that I'm the only one going through what I'm going through, uh, missing my choirs and uh, having to sit in front of a computer, you know, for five hours a day. None of us signed up for that. You know, we wanted to make music and, and move around. And so uh, I know uh, my wife, Tina, today was just saying, I'm exhausted from doing nothing, <laughs> basically sitting in front of the computer. And so uh, we have to remember that this, this is temporary. Uh, we will get back to whatever the new normal is going to be. Um, but I know that I've been invigorated by being able to interact with all of you, hearing our panel, watching that chat go by, and knowing that I'm not alone at all. We're actually in this together. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jeffrey, for putting this together. Thank you, Trish and, and CMEA. And uh, we're going to say thank you so much. Um, we're going to unmute everybody for a second, and you can all do a real quick thank you and clap or whatever you want to do. Of course, I didn't want to be alone. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Keep up the great work. Bye.